Hello there, I'm Black Right News and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel and I just wanted to talk about the four star hotel. 230 rooms. It's called the Needham House Hotel. It's located in Hitchin, which is in Hertfordshire. And what the headlines are saying is that the 230 room hotel is going to be set aside for asylum seekers. Now you can imagine how this is going to cause an uproar, especially when you have British people who, for whatever reason, because of the housing situation, can't get a room, can't be housed. And then you have asylum seekers seeming to be taking priority over the indigenous Brits in the UK. So I can understand why um, people are getting upset every single day. The asylum seekers are dominating the news, and I think it's unfair that they do that. But that is the media trying to send us a message. The message isn't always accurate. It's A lot of it is left to our imagination, and sometimes our imagination is worse than fact. So let's think about this hotel, luxury hotel, apparently it's got beautiful grounds and when you see the photograph of it, it looks very luxurious. It's supposed to have a sauna and a gym and that kind of stuff and you know that the asylum seekers are not going to have access to the luxury amenities. We know that. What we also know is that the reason why um, this is so lucrative for hoteliers is because since COVID, not many people have been staying in hotels. The hotels have got a lot of empty rooms. And because they've got a lot of empty rooms, it's affecting their income. They don't have the income. So a lot of them are taking advantage of the government initiative to subsidise them and say, look, you know, you put up 230 families, this is what we're going to pay. You've, you've got guaranteed income for the next, how long it takes, usually about a year. So they have a guaranteed income for every room in that hotel. Now, why wouldn't they take that? Now you've got 11 weddings for the year <clears throat> and the brides sorry, the brides are kicking up a stink and saying, look, we've had to cancel our weddings. We've paid so much. We booked it so far in advance. We've got proms, two proms that needed to be cancelled. I do apologise. But from a hotel's standpoint, I mean, hotels are a business. They're not a charity and they are going to look at guaranteed income. So while 11 weddings would pull in quite a lot of money, it's only for 11 days as opposed to 365 days in the year when they can get guaranteed income. So I can understand where the hotels are coming from. Nobody is forcing the hotels to take asylum seekers. I thought the barges would be sufficient. Apparently not. But even so, I don't know why the headlines are so provocative and making it so, um, <clears throat> making it so that Indigenous Brits are feeling so resentful. And it's justified to feel resentful. If you're in this housing crisis where landlords are booting people out because of the new legislation, because of the new commitments, um, the, new, the, the additional expenses making it less profitable for them. So a lot of landlords are kicking out um, good tenants, whether it's under Section 21 or bad tenants because they haven't paid their rent under Section 8. Regardless of which legislation they use, a lot of landlords are saying, look, we don't want to be bothered with tenants anymore. We want our homes back and we just want peace. As a result, you've got a lot of British people and people from other nationalities who are being forced to leave the accommodation and 
look for home, homes elsewhere, which are much more expensive, which probably they can't afford. And some of them, if they're claimants, um, if they're not benefit claimants, they don't even get the help that they would like from the council. Those who are claimants will have needed to have paid their rent on time. They can't have any arrears. And so when you find situations like this where people have been forced to be homeless through no fault of their own, and then every day you see something about the housing of the asylum seekers, what is that going to do to you? How is that going to make you feel? It's going to make you feel like shit, isn't it? You're going to think the country doesn't care about me. It cares about foreigners. And this is what causes animosity against foreigners. It's the way the news is presented. As though the foreigners, and maybe they, it's justified, the foreigners may well be given more priority over the British people. But is it their fault? Or should people be looking at the government and saying, why is the government giving them priority when we the people are living the way we're living. Now technically within 60 days, I think it is, um, you should be housed after you've been given, after you've been evicted, providing like I said you don't owe any rent and you weren't evicted because you were antisocial or a nuisance, loud, and all that kind of stuff. So provided it none of those things, you should be rehoused. But what the council is saying, look, we haven't got the housing. We, we haven't got enough houses. But you've got enough houses, and you're making provisions for, for asylum seekers. So how does that work? Why can't you make the same provisions for your own people? Anyway. Where am I going with this? I think I've said enough because basically, um, yeah, I think I've said enough. I'll end it there. I'm Black Bright News. Bye-bye.